and look at that. Look at that forearm. It's all hard and vascular like a cock. Respect it. All right, that aside, guys, it is time for part four of the Q&A, so let's get to it. First question. How should one go about their deadlifting training while squatting five times a week? Not quite sure how I would work them in. I really fell in love with high-frequency squatting and have made insane size and strength gains, but wasn't doing much heavy pulling. Yeah, here's where the compromise comes in. It becomes very difficult to squat heavy at an ultra-high frequency and deadlift heavy at an ultra-high frequency, particularly for drug-free guys. So here's what I recommend you do. Deadlift twice a week. Don't go over 70%. Don't go over triples. And I know a lot of people are going, well, I could do up to 8 to 10 reps with 70%. I know you can. But do triples. Focus on technique and speed and explosiveness. Turn those 70% intensity reps into extremely explosive speed training work so that you get good at pulling off the floor really, really fast. And as long as you're ingraining the technique, even with the 70%, you're training the motor patterns to increase your deadlift. And the actual squatting will do most of your strength training. And that squat training combined with that technique work on the deadlift will improve your max deadlift over time. And that way you can get away with the high frequency squatting without burying yourself. So yeah, twice a week is fine. Now you might be able to get away with pulling like that up to five days a week, but it's really going to depend on the person. I would start with two and be very conservative with adding frequency on the deadlift at that point. That's just how I would approach it. All right, next question. When doing pulling exercises, does it make a difference if I grip the bar more in my fingers than on my palm? This feels more comfortable and grip strength is not an issue. Well, that is how you should grip. In fact, if you look at my hands, let me get a close up. If you look at where my calluses are, they're on the very edge of my palms right by my fingers. And that's from all the pulling that I do. That's how I grip my rows. That's how I grip my deadlifts. And that's perfectly normal. When you grip the bar in a power grip, the fingers are taking a very large amount of the, the surface area. Just the very base of your palm right there is taking weight. So that should really be the only part that's really under the load. The other part is wrapped around over the top of the bar. So that's perfectly normal. You're actually gripping it correctly, and that's why grip doesn't seem to be an issue for you and it feels more comfortable. That should be your natural grip. So carry on with what you're doing. You're doing it right. All right, next question. How to build a successful YouTube channel? How to grow to 30K subs, please. A lot of people said drama, but the truth is, guys, my first drama video back when I had the Ice Cream Fitness channel, I didn't do it till I had 24,000 subs already. The first time I ever mentioned natural or enhanced stuff or anything like that was at 24,000 subs. I got there by interacting with the community, by making consistent videos. If you want to grow quickly, you need to make a video every single day. You need to have unique content. You need to have some unique style, something that sets you apart. If you're not extremely entertaining, then you either need entertainment value or you need to be very, very informative and sound like you know what the hell you're talking about and you probably do need to know what you're talking about. So you either need one of those two angles. Now the people who have both are golden, but they're very rare. A lot of the more entertaining people out there are not giving you very much useful information at all, irrespective of what niche it's in. But that helps in an interaction with the community. You're going to find the fitness world is a bit of a community. You need to interact with other channels because that's what will get you there. I would say that for me, the biggest initial jump I got in subscriber growth is when the Hodge twins commented on one of my videos and left some positive comments. I gained a ton of subscribers. And so it's interaction with the other channels is how you do it. Make a name for yourself, but, but I will tell you straight up front, if you're not willing to put in the work, no one's going to help you. If someone goes to your channel and you're asking them to shout you out, that's not the best way to do it. You need to interact with those bigger channels, but you need content. You need to show them some of your content and say, hey, what do you think of this? Maybe a bigger channel will look at it, click like on it, comment. Their subscribers will see that and you'll get growth from it. But if you only have 20 videos, forget it. You're not going to grow. I would say that when I first got to 10,000 subscribers on the original channel I started, I had well over 100 videos, maybe 150 videos already. So you really need a lot of content. And again, if you're not making a video every day, 
don't expect consistent good channel growth unless you just have something really unique that explodes you out of the scene like someone like C.T. Fletcher had. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. So it's consistency, having some unique angle, and interaction with the community. Because if your videos aren't being seen, it doesn't matter how good or entertaining your content is. It just simply doesn't matter because nobody's going to see it. So interaction with the community is everything. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.